Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over 2.04 Guy Lussac's Law. Have your calculator, pen, and paper ready. So, real quickly, again, this unit is about the gas laws or the laws that affect how gases behave. And the first one we did was Boyle's Law. So, when pressure goes up, volume goes down. When pressure goes down, volume goes up. And for these, it helps to have a real life example. So picture a balloon. When you squeeze it, it gets smaller. When you let go, it gets bigger. Or this is a good one for when you have a pressurized container, like a fire extinguisher or an aerosol can. And when you release the top, release the pressure, the gas spreads out. All right, so what about Charles Law? When the temperature goes up, the volume goes, oh, you're on a nice hot beach, what do you do? You spread out, the volume also goes up. But when the temperature goes down, right, you huddle together, the volume, the amount of space something takes up, also goes down. So now let's look at Guy Lussac. Guy Lussac said, when pressure goes up, temperature goes up. All right, so let's look at the picture I chose here. I have the cover on a boiling pot of water. If you've ever done this in real life, what happens to a cover once the water starts boiling? Once it gets that temperature, it starts to like, right? Oh, that was terrible sound effects. That was supposed to be the cover bouncing up and down, okay? But you know that the cover bounces up and down because the gas is trying to escape as a little bit is doing here. It bounces up and down because as the temperature rises, the molecules are going quicker and quicker and quicker, and it's an increase in pressure. All right, I also like to think about how fast the molecules are going. So temperature means how fast the molecules are going. If it's cold, they're going slowly. If it's hot, they're having a party, right? They're going really fast. Okay, so with that pressure, think about if you bump into something slowly. It doesn't hurt, there's not a lot of pressure. But if you bump into it quickly, you have a lot of pressure. So the faster it is, or in other words, the higher the temperature, because that's what temperature really is, how fast the molecules are moving, the higher the temperature, the more the pressure, the lower the temperature, the slower the molecules are going, and the less amount of pressure against the wall or when they bump into each other as well. All right. So when pressure goes up, temperature goes up. When pressure goes down, when you release the cover, and if you let it sit there, you know that your cup of coffee or your pot of boiling water is going to cool off a lot quicker. There's less pressure holding it in. And yes, this does also change the volume. Okay? Now, to be fair, it's really hard to show good examples without just showing gauges. So if you do HVAC, which is heating and air conditioning. It's actually a really good job to get into. Um, I think it requires about two years of schooling and they get paid really well. So HVAC, if you're the kind of person that likes to fix things like heating and cooling would be what they focus on. Um, they use pressure and temperature. Also in vehicles with the oil pressure and temperature, you got the gauges. So since gauges are kind of hard to remember, that's why I tried to figure out some real life examples. Now, yes, the volume is changing, but when we do Guy Lussac's law, we're going to assume the volume stays the same. And we're only manipulating pressure and temperature. Okay? So, Joseph Louis Guy Lussac, who was French, hence my funny accent, investigated the relationship between gas, temperature, and pressure. Look at a cylinder or sphere that has a fixed constant volume and is filled with a fixed amount of gas molecules. So that's important, and I haven't stressed that very much, but when you're doing Boyle's Law, the pressure and volume can change. We assume the temperature stays constant and the amount of molecules stays constant. Charles Law, temperature and volume can change. We assume what stays constant? Well, the pressure because the pressure is not in the formula. So the pressure stays the same and the amount of molecules stays the same. So for Guy Lussac's law, we're saying that the volume and the amount of molecules stays the same. So we're only changing pressure and temperature. At any given temperature, the gas molecules are moving because they have internal energy. 
So remember my little demonstration with my fist, the warmer it is, the faster the molecules are going. They collide with the walls and exert pressure or a force per area on the container. So the faster they're going, the more pressure. The slower they're going, the more gently they hit, the less pressure. If you heat the container, the gas molecules receive more energy. They move faster and collide against the walls more frequently and with more force. Because the force of collision increases and the volume and surface area are fixed, the pressure has to increase. By contrast, if you cool the cylinder, the gas molecules lose energy, they collide against the walls less frequently, and with less force, the pressure decreases. All right. So when the temperature increases, pressure increases. When the temperature decreases, the pressure decreases. And Guy Lussac's law is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Let's do a problem. You have a closed tank of air at a pressure of 203 kilopascals and temperature of 273 Kelvin. Make sure you know your units. So K is Kelvin, KPA is kilopascals. When the tank and the air are heated to, two, to 323 Kelvin, what is the pressure if the volume remains constant? So when you get these problems, what's the very first thing you do? List what you know. So I would list out all my numbers. And then I would go back and read it again and say, OK, which one was my starting pressure? Which one was my starting temperature? And fill in the P1, T1, T2. Let's look at my P2. So my temperature goes from 273 to 323. Did it go up or down? It went up. So since my temperature went up, my pressure is going to also go up. So this tells me that P2 will be greater than 203. It's a good way to check your math at the end. All right, so we have our formula. Plug in our numbers. And we cross multiply. So I got 65,569 equals 273P. Divide both sides by 273. And I get 240.18. First of all, does that make sense? I end up with 240. I started with 203. Oh, yep, it went up. That should be right. OK, what's my unit? So my unit is kilopascals, because it was pressure. All right, let's do another one. When a tire's pressure increases from 200 kilopascals to 250 kilopascals, the final temperature was 300 Kelvin. What was the starting temp? So we have Gilu-Sachs law. What do we do first? Make a list of all the numbers and what they stand for. So hit pause. Make sure you can do this yourself. And we're solving for T1. And let's quick look. So our starting pressure was less than our final pressure. So this number should be more or less than 300. Well, since we're finding the starting one and the starting one was less, this answer should be less than 300. All right, plug in your numbers, get your answer. And solve for T. And the answer is 240 Kelvin, which is less than 300, so that makes sense. All right, that's it for this lesson. Um, make sure.